Hi there, my name is Danielle Roberge. I am a group retirement consultant here at Uyghurs Financial and Benefits. I'm here to talk a little bit today about group retirement plans. If you are on a group retirement plan right now, this will be a good refresher or maybe provide some tidbits that you weren't aware of on your plan. As a reminder, every plan is a little bit different, so always be sure to check your plan booklet to ensure your fund lineup, your plan details, any particular specifically. Why do employers have plans like this in place? Group retirement plans, pension plans, different profit sharing plans, we're gonna to get to all of those in a minute. The key reasons are really to attract, retain, and reward key team members like yourselves. We know that the reality of saving for retirement is becoming increasingly more difficult and it's becoming very hard for Canadians to make meaningful savings to their retirement throughout their working years. Plans like this really help you put your best foot forward, make saving you know, easy, simple, and uh, really provide an avenue to make meaningful contributions to a plan throughout those working years. A little bit about some different types of plans. So, uh, commonly you know, referred to as retirement savings plans, group retirement savings plans, these work very similar to uh, retirement plans you might hold with an individual advisor or at the bank where you get a tax receipt for these contributions at the end of the year. Something specific to the group retirement plan space though is your contributions that go into the plan are using your gross dollars. So you get to have uh, those contributions directed to your retirement savings before any tax CPP, EI, any of your other deductions take place. When we look at your contributions into the plan and the employer contributions into the plan, those might be based on a percentage of your earnings or a flat dollar amount, but those contributions in addition to any investment growth, most plans allow for you to choose what investment option you're comfortable with. So any growth you have on that investment will also contribute to that pot of money you have at the end of the day that is for your retirement savings. One thing to keep in mind is there is what's called a first time home buyers program in Canada that's regulated through CRA, if you're somebody who qualifies for that program, you might be able to tap into your group retirement savings to access this money to use as a down payment for your first home. So keep that in mind. Lots of plans allow for that to be withdrawn for that purpose. So if you're going to be a first time home buyer in the near future, uh, get in touch with us and we can, we can walk you through that. Commonly used with group retirement plans or, or what are referred to as deferred profit sharing plans or sometimes DPSPs. What these are is a different type of plan set up specifically for the employer contribution. So as you can see on the screen here, there's still that group retirement savings plan. That's where your contributions into the plan would go. Um, but in addition to that, there's the deferred profit sharing plan. It works very similar to the previous structure we, we spoke about, but in the DPSP setup, there is commonly what's called a vesting period put in place. A vesting period is essentially a window of time that you have to fulfill, rather based on employment or time specifically once you join the plan, that you have to fulfill in order to be able to take that DPSP portion, that employer portion, with you when you leave or retire. For example, if I was on a plan that had a six month waiting period and I joined the plan at that six month mark, and three months later I left my employment to another job opportunity, those three months of contributions that have gone into that DPSP, those would actually get forfeited back to my employer. So check your plan out, make sure you know what the vesting period is, that's an important piece of the uh, DPSP. Lastly, we have registered pension plans. You know, pension plans have a lot of jargon around them. I think people often jump to the conclusion or the automatic response of defined benefit pension plans, which are commonly seen in the public sector that are a little bit more guaranteeing what the actual benefit will be in retirement. Um, we commonly see in the in the private sector def, our, uh, defined contribution pension plans. So these are really working very similar to kind of the other structures where we talked about where it's a defined amount that's actually going into the plan. So that would be your contributions, the employer contributions, again, based on a percentage of your earnings or, you know, maybe a flat dollar amount. With all plan designs too, we are seeing more and more common uh, a tiered system based on years of service. So if you're on the plan right now and you're looking at what your plan consists of, definitely check it out because there might be some additional levels that you could benefit from um, as your employment grows. 
Something a little bit different with pension plans that we haven't previously talked about is uh, the locked in period. So this is for all pension plans in Saskatchewan. That's not a specific rule to uh, your pension plan is the locked in um, clause. So what this really means is you cannot access these funds until you are age 55. There is a few kind of stipulations from that, but for the majority, age 55 is gonna be the earliest you're gonna be able to tap into this money. The first time home birth program we spoke about earlier, that would not apply here. The funds are locked in. Um, and like I said, there's a few stipulations from that for the most part, age 55 is gonna be the earliest you're gonna be able to access this. Main reason for that is the uh, intent is really for this plan to be long-term retirement savings. They're often is vesting on, on pension plans as well. So as I mentioned, check out your plan um, particulars to find out what that might be. You have the option for the most part to choose what investment options are available to you and choose where you want your contributions invested and your employer's contributions invested. Most commonly on the plans that we deal with here at Uyghurs, most often the default option or if you don't choose something as you enroll, you will be invested in what's called a target date fund. So as you can see here, these funds automatically de-risk as you get closer to age 65 or your hypothetical retirement age. So for somebody who's joining the plan that might be, you know, maybe age 60, it's going to be in a very conservative type fund and just become more conservative in those last couple years. Whereas somebody who's maybe, you know, in their 30s, it's going to be a little bit more um, on a growth level, uh, maybe a little bit balanced. And then as you transition, as you get older to, you know, your age of retirement, it will automatically de-risk. These are very much a choose it and not stress about it, not worry about it. The fund does the work for you. You don't have to worry about rebalancing, de-risking. Um, the fund has kind of all of that managed. The second most common option for sure we see are what are called target risk funds. These, different than target date, these hold one risk category throughout your whole time of holding that fund. So, you know, I, I think if we look at these categories, they're probably terms you're familiar with, you know, a conservative, moderate, balanced, uh, growth, and uh, aggressive. Those would be areas that really target what those investment options included that in that fund are targeted towards. Oftentimes when you enroll in a plan, or this is available also if you're just looking at other options, but there is what's called a risk profile questionnaire that really points you to which fund would be most suitable based on your risk comfortability. So if you're sitting here kind of thinking, you know what, where do I fall on this scale? My recommendation would be definitely check that risk profiler out and uh, you know use that as a starting point. Lastly, there's a couple other more specific investment options uh, typically available on your lineup. One would be a guaranteed fund. So if you um, really know that you do not want to take any risk on, you don't want to have that volatility potentially with other investment options, and you want something guaranteed, those typically are available on the lineup. In addition, there's also more specific funds. So um, all of the, the previous areas that we've talked about have been uh, kind of asset allocation funds where there are a whole variety of investments pooled under one fund. These more specifically would allow you to target specific industries and sectors and make up your own portfolio. So if you're somebody who wants to, you know, do the research, look at the rebalancing frequently, um, really have a pulse on where your account is and, and do that check in more frequently, this might be an option for you. I would say most commonly we see this used for people who are a little bit more sophisticated in their investment knowledge and like I said, want to put the time and effort into um, being in charge of what they're what they're holding. A few kind of things to keep in mind on, on your uh, retirement plan. Typically, voluntary unmatched contributions are allowed. So if you're, you know, kind of wondering, how do I make my savings grow a little bit faster? What's something I can do that I'm not going to, um, you know, feel really hurt my net pay at the end of the day? Voluntary contributions make that super easy for you. So check out if your plan allows that. This is a really easy way to make your savings a little bit more meaningful and grow a little bit faster. Pay yourself first. We talked about using those gross dollars off of the off of your paycheck to uh, go into your plan. And that really, really enforces that you are taking care of yourself first. You're taking care of yourself in retirement before you have those everyday um, expenses, bills, other um, you know options that you want to spend your money on uh, before you have those come into play. 
a couple reminders, one being whatever you've chosen on your plan or whatever you maybe are looking at, you need to uh, review your investment options and where your funds are held on a yearly basis or anytime you have a life change happen. Um, you know, if you've signed up on a plan and you don't even remember what you invested in or you haven't looked at it in a really long time, uh, if you're a Planet Uyghurs, reach out to us. That's what we're here to help you with is to make sure what you've chosen is a appropriate investment for your situation. Um, and secondly, keeping your beneficiaries up to date. We see time and time again, people who have not remembered or updated their beneficiary when they have a life change. Maybe you've gotten married, divorced, you have a blended family, or maybe you've had more kids. This is something that you have to remember to keep up to date. At the end of the day, we wanna make sure that your, fun, your funds are going to the family member or friend or whoever you have chosen that would be um, who you wanted to go towards. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is something that you definitely have to keep up to date. Thanks for spending the time with me today. I hope you learned something out of this short presentation. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us here at Uyghurs.